Alright guys, your boy is back and today I'm going to be bringing you my top 3 favorite characters from Kijun. Alright, so coming in at number 3, we got Nozomi herself. Um, back before I rewatched the show, I actually didn't have like a number 3 character. Like I, you could put any character from the show as number 3 and I'd be like, yeah, they're, they're number 3, right? But after rewatching the show, i really grown fond of Nozomi. Uh, let's start off with the character design. Honestly, it looks, it looks kind of standard to be honest with you. But over time, you just kind of get used to it. And especially when it, she goes into her 100% form at the end in the last fight, something about it just looks like super mature. And I really do like that design, especially like how I think the bow in her hair or something like that gets turned into like a scarf. I thought that was pretty dope. Um, another thing that I like about her is that she works extremely hard. Like at the very beginning, she's trying to just be rich. Like this is like very, very beginning. Like three minutes into the first episode before she does her fights in what's it called the um, the little um, test things the little test fights before she does that she all she wants to do is just like become a prize queen and like make money and so when she gets into the fight and she actually like starts fighting and then she ends up losing she comes to the conclusion that she wants to do more than just make money and it's just she wants to win she wants to be the what's it called a top player and of course, you know, make money while you're doing that because, you know, making money is real nice. So, that's something that I really like about it. And what's it called? Not only does, like, she goes to such extreme lengths to, like, learn how to be better. Like, for example, when she's fighting Maya at the end in the last fight, she literally sticks her face into her ass. Just to, because she's not allowed to use her hands, so she has to stick her face into her ass. And basically, get a feel for her butt so that way she can understand how it works, you know? And as ridiculous as it seems, it was extremely funny at the time, you know, and it still is funny in my opinion. And basically, like, she takes it one step further, like, if you, like, I'm pretty sure at one point, like, she actually sniffs her ass, so that way she can get another, uh, what's it called? Uh, so that way she can learn even more, and then Maya, you know, just charges up and bang, blasts her right in the face, which honestly seems like it's gotta hurt. And she does something similar with, uh, Hanabi at the beginning. Hanabi, what's it called, is fighting, like, is hitting people in like the jaw so that way what's it called they can get a concussion and so when she strikes nozomi instead of like letting her hit her in she like face plants into her ass so that way she doesn't get knocked unconscious and she takes a heavy hit though and i thought that was hella funny um what's it called not only that going back to like what's it called the fight with maya her final fight like, all her fights in general in my opinion were actually really good but the final fight with maya that shit was crazy good that's probably one of my favorite fights to watch like, it was just so well done, and I love it so much. The fact that it, at the most, it only takes, like, the one-on-one -on -one fight only takes, like, at the most, takes, like, one episode, maybe, like, half an episode, which was really quick, very good fight, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's one of the things I really, also, her vacuum butt cannon was, <laughs> as ridiculous as it seemed, like, ripping through people's clothes and stuff like that, it really did prevail in the end against, um, what's it called? against Maya and I thought that was very I don't know I just really enjoyed the fights and so because obviously she's the main character she gets the best fights it really does put her as uh, like in top, my top three list for sure and so yeah that's pretty much all I had to say about Nozomi because you know Kike, uh, Kijo only has one season so there's not too much to go off of that you know all right now coming into number two I got Alba Alba is actually super adorable especially at the beginning like you know she gets super mad when nozomi rips the thing off and then as soon as she hears that nozomi like says what's it called that everybody has a funny dialect she just completely shuts down and doesn't talk at all until like the end of the second episode i believe and i don't know i just thought that was very cute and what's it called um she ends up turning to be a very good character in my opinion like she doesn't win a single match i've granted she only has like two matches but what's it called her losing the first one was kind of like, I felt really bad because she worked with her teammates to corner Mio and then for her to lose to Forbidden the Technique is, is like, damn, I really do feel bad for her. And then in the second match, it's, I feel even worse because she's, she's just improved so much and like with her scanning hands, she was able to like get everyone's techniques and to put up an amazing fight against like someone who they mentioned is like OP, super powerful fighter. It's pretty crazy, and that fight was also super good, in my opinion. It was the whole, all, for the majority, almost all the fights are very good. Like she works with her teammates at the beginning. They put on this act of like not being able to work together as a team properly, but then what's it called? It was all just a trap to basically knock over two opponents by using the what's it called? I believe they call it a 
What's the... No. Alright, well, basically, the land. That's what they call it, the land. Uh, but it's like, she uses the land to her advantage to knock over two characters. And then she basically solos um, against the... Um, I don't remember her name. But the character, like, the black... They call her, I think, the Black Horse or something like that. Or, like, the Black Horse, something like that. But she was crazy powerful, though. And so, like, I thought she won, too, because, you know, the replay shows, like, you know, the water what's it called was going up for her opponent but you know her, her what's it called her boo was like still spinning and basically all the water was moving out of the way so technically alba fell in the water first which is kind of crazy in my opinion and like you just feel so bad it's like wow you know especially how she went in with the boob dunk against her that was pretty crazy she just takes all oh, and when you talk about her techniques you have to mention the gate of booty long like do you see that thing that shit was hilarious also, in order to get the big gate of Hoodoolong, everybody literally lined their ass up for her so that way she can get their techniques. Which is, I thought it was hilarious, you know. Just, just the fact that like they were trying to pour so much emotion into that, and it was emotional in my opinion. Like, you know, it made me, it made me uh, feel a little bit, I, it was heartwarming to see that they would do that for her. But yeah, for the most part, I felt really bad for her like when she lost. Because, like, you really hope that she wins because she's not, like, super overpowered. She doesn't have, like, she's not super fast like Miata. She's not the main character like Nozomi. She's not Mio, who's number one ranked and what's it called. And she just doesn't have, like, a super powerful quality. But, and she's just, like, super balanced. And for her to pretty much face someone that's they called OP is pretty, and to almost win it was pretty impressive in my opinion. And that's what I really like about Oba. Another scene that I want to mention about Alba is when they on their, when they get to Kyoto and you know they get the three hours to chill and stuff like that. Um, when they come back and like they say, I was like, you guys really went crazy buying stuff, right? You just see like you know I think Miata has like uh, stuffed stuffed teddy bear and he has Nozomi with like food. I forget what uh, Non has, but. It's something normal, and then you see Alba with not one, not two, but five swords on her bag. Like, you don't need five swords, but there she is, the shy girl with five swords on her bag. Like, what's she gonna do with those, brother? Like, wait, I don't know. It's not really relevant at all, but it's just a scene that really made me like her a little bit more, you know? And that's just how it be. Now, before we get into number one, I want to give an honorable mention to Maya. Maya is, like, the big bad boss at the last fight. And, you know, for the most part, like, you don't really, you don't see her at all for, like, until, like, episode 8 or 9, or maybe even 10, no, 9. You know, you see her in episode 9, and you only have, like, 3 episodes to really build up a little bit of story, you know. And for the most part, her story is actually not that bad, it's decent. But, for some reason, it actually does make me feel some sympathy for her. And so that way, when she's going up against her, it's like, damn, this is actually a good fight when she goes up against Mazomi herself. And basically, she also has like obviously she's she's known as Maya's known as the number two fighter, and her other personality Kaya is known as the number one fighter of their school. And basically, um, when she's uh, when Kaya takes over, her transition is super dope. Like if I can, uh, I don't know if I'll learn how to make a clip, but I'll try and see if I can post a clip now. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, her transition from blonde hair to silver into Kaya was, in my opinion, super dope. Kaya, like, as soon as they introduced Kaya, like, you know, she was super powerful. Like, she was OP. Like, she just she knocked out her own opponent. She sauced everybody. And basically, it took, you know, Nozomi going to 100% to take her. But I really like how, like, as soon as she went to 100%, they got into the big fight, you know? Um, no, wait, no. As soon as Nozomi went to 100%, she started saucing up Kaya, and then they switched back into Maya. And Maya is like, because Maya took over because she wanted to finish the fight for herself. She wanted to win. She didn't want to depend on Kaya or something like that. And basically... It was pretty, oh yeah, and going back to Kaya, what's it called, when she does the, I don't exactly remember the attack, but like she uses her boobs and like hits one of them to like distort Nozomi's vision, so when you see uh, Kaya walking up to Nozomi all distorted, that shit looked creepy as hell, I was like, oh shit, I actually sent some chills on my, to that on my bag, you already know, and so when Maya comes back, and they have the final showdown versus, you know, uh, the vacuum book cannon versus heaven and hell, which is an amazing name by the way. 
heaven and hell. It was actually such a, like, it was so dope to see, I forgot what she attacked with. Did she attack with heaven or did she attack with hell first, revert it, and then attack with hell? But, you know, that can drug cannon prevails in that case. But it was still such a cool fight that I just had to give an honorable mention to Maya. Now, this, to Maya, now this doesn't actually mean that she's my fourth favorite character. It's just a character that I wanted to, you know, give an honorable mention to. But yeah, shout out to her for being a dope ass boss, in my opinion. Alright, now coming in in first place, my favorite character has to be Mio. Mio just looks like an amazing character, like an OP character, too powerful. You see her with the blonde hair, the long blonde hair. She just looks absolutely amazing as a character, like her design is amazing. And basically, one of the things I really like about her is that she's the number one fighter at the school. You know, she's the number one elite class member. She hasn't lost and what's it called? Well, technically she did lose in the match against Alba because she got disqualified for using titty hypnosis, which is, in my opinion, <laughs> a hilarious technique to have to use. But yeah, and the thing is, we never, at least I don't think we ever find out how powerful she is because you see her just use titty hypnosis, right? She didn't really fight. She struck Alba once and Alba said it was painful and then she used titty hypnosis. They fall down and then basically the second time you see her is when she's in the final tournament match and she basically solos the twins, like, she solos the twins, but at one point, you know, Nana says the one that's, like, causing trouble for Miata, and what's it called? Who else was there? It was one more character that I can't seem to remember. I don't remember her name, but the girl with the Cerberus, you know, Cer she gets sauced real bad. Miata's having a bit of trouble, you know. The W Acceleration, uh, what's it called? Obviously beats her, but she all she's getting sauced when she's down. But Mio, like, you know, saves them real quick by pushing her away while they're trying to recover. Like, it was nothing. And then when she goes to take on the twins, <laughs> her attacks are pretty much just her making them. It's just basically her arousing them until the point where I'm pretty sure they end up falling because, like, their legs give out after she makes them. In my opinion, she probably makes them come after that. And so, they just fall down after that. And the funny thing is that one of the twins is actually smiling, while the other one is obviously, you know, not smiling. And the, the attacks are just ridiculous. Like, hip, nip, shock. I think one of them is called the Queen's Bounty. Um, and I'm not sure what else, but like, you know, her attacks are just ridiculous. But like, she just like, is completely just dominating both of them. And I just thought that was hella funny. But yeah, like I said, you really don't see her struggle in any match other than those two. I'm not, not other than those two. You don't see her struggling at all. You just see her dominating in both matches for the most part. And I just thought that was super funny. And you know, the thing is like, her whole like, her whole demeanor, like she doesn't get angry at all. Like if anybody like tries to mock her or anything like that, it's just two things. One, tease her and flirt with her. And that's pretty much it. You know, that's all she does. And like, in my opinion, it's just hilarious. And you know, you see her trying to get with Nozomi throughout the whole entire show. She's trying to sleep with her. And then at the very end, you actually see her get a kiss on Nozomi. And then gets pushed away by, I'm not sure which character. Some character for sure, like, uh, pulls her away from her. But for the most part, she's just super funny, super powerful. And just a very good uh, character design, in my opinion. And that's pretty much all I have to, like, there's not much about her. But all those things that I did see about her makes her, in my opinion, my favorite character. She's absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, that's pretty much everything I have for Mio. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like. And I apologize for not uploading, but you know, I just didn't feel like uploading for the last couple days. But I'm back on track. I should be back on track now. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.